how's it going folks? Stu here with another one from London Film Festival. This one is a biggie. It's the world premiere of the latest Guillermo del Toro joint, aka maybe the most wholesome human on earth. That man has delivered banger after banger after banger after banger. Frankly, it should be illegal. And this time he's turned his eye to the world of stop motion animation for a new adaptation of Pinocchio, which is, I'm sure I don't need to explain, a story that's been told many times. But is Mr. Del Toro's version Del Toro -y enough to convince us we needed this at all in the first place? The answer, my friends, is a very big fat. Yes. This one was a delightful old time, thoroughly, wholesomely satisfied with Mr. Del Toro's Pinocchio here. I don't feel like I need to explain the story of Pinocchio, so I'm not gonna. It's the one about the wooden boy with the long nose, yeah? Capiche? This one is a co-directing effort from Guillermo del Toro and Mark Gustafsson, who you may know as the animation coordinator behind films like Fantastic Mr. Fox, the Wes Anderson one, which was another delightful stop motion film. I feel like if you're going to go into the stop motion realm like del Toro is here, it's a good thing to do it alongside someone that knows what they're doing in that department. So yeah, getting Gustafsson on board, good move. And the proof really is in the pudding in this one, because the pudding is delicious to look at at every stage. I'm always stunned and just fascinated by stop motion animation on screen. Good stop motion animation really wonderfully uses the fact that we know as an audience this is something that's being manipulated and made in front of us. And there's a real charm to that which is just continually captivating. So honestly, I gotta sort of preface this review by saying that if you do your film in stop motion, I I'm probably still gonna have a great time anyway. I think of some of the worst films I've ever seen and if they were stop motion, I'd probably love them. <laughs> but the animation here is really, really stunning. And as you can imagine, Guillermo del Toro's unique and sort of dark gothic vision in all of his films pairs really wonderfully with the world of, I guess, stop motion animation. And the result is something that just never doesn't look just astonishing. Like there, I know it's easy to say when you see a stop motion animation film, but there are moments in this where I don't know how people captured that. Like I don't know how that was done. The patience and the deliberation and the artistry behind modeling and maneuvering these characters and these puppets to mimic actual shots and movements of, it's always astonishing. It always comes through the frame and it adds so much to a film like this is sense of creativity and personality. And that's one of the great things that Del Toro as a filmmaker is able to bring to the story of Pinocchio here. It's great seeing something that we've seen done before, done through a different lens with different focuses. It's got all of those trademark Del Toro motifs woven in throughout the fabric of this thing. He sets his tale of Pinocchio within the backdrop of a 1930s fascist Italy, which is an incredibly Del Toro thing to do. This isn't quite as effective as something like Pan's Labyrinth, which is inevitable because that film is his masterpiece in my opinion. But if you've seen Pan's Labyrinth, you'll have some understanding of the way that Del Toro is able to merge those kind of fantastical elements with a very grounded, real and very dark tone. And that'll take you some way to understanding what he's doing here, albeit in a obviously very different way with his Pinocchio adaptation. And there are dark moments in there, which is what you want to see from Del Toro. But on the whole, this is still a really fun family film. I could see a lot of this current generation of children really warming to this and loving this and growing up with its lessons and learning about it. And then looking back on it later on and picking up on the actual darker, more kind of real world things that are in there. You know, it's a film with a talking cricket that lives inside a wooden boy that's also dealing with fascism. So <laughs> it helps that Del Toro's crammed an absolutely stacked cast into this one. I didn't really know who was in this film until just before the film. I pulled up IMDb and I was like, I wonder who's in this? And the answer was everyone I've ever loved and known. Tilda Swinton, Kate Blanchett, Ewan McGregor, John Turturro, Ron Perlman, Christoph Waltz. This is too good a cast, right? Can we just get that clear? And there's really no weak links in the cast here. Everyone's doing a really great job. I particularly love David Bradley as Geppetto, who just, I don't know how to describe it really. He just, you immediately know that he's crushing this. Thing. Gregory Mann is the kid that plays Pinocchio in this one. He's not been in much before this, so I certainly haven't seen him in anything before. And his voice lends itself really, really well to Pinocchio as a character here. This real kind of childlike naivety and playfulness that comes from his character contrasts really, really well with David Bradley's voice work. And I really like the two of them together in this film. I thought they were really great. And as usual, the score of this thing is woven really, really wonderfully into the mix. It's Alexander Desplat again, who's done a lot of work with Del Toro in the past. And in that sense, I suppose it kind of feels a bit like a cozy, reliable hug. You know, it's a score that I feel like we've heard a lot of similarly before in Del Toro's other work, but 
still works really, really well for this telling of the Pinocchio story. There's some music in there. So I had no idea that this film was even slightly a musical, but that was a really big surprise in the film. But I like the way that those weave themselves into the film. They never really overstay their welcome. I think, to be frank, not all the musical numbers work as well as others. And I would have liked some of them to be a little bit longer. I don't think it would have been too much of a problem to have a few more musical numbers in there. But it's nice that they are in there and it just adds one more level of creativity and imagination into the mix. And I think that's definitely the overall thing I'd say about Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. It is just a film that is brimming with imagination in a way that only someone like Guillermo del Toro could successfully pull off. I would say that it's not my favourite Guillermo del Toro film overall. And I think this is maybe where I differ a little bit from a lot of other people I know that have been really loving this thing. But I'm not entirely sure it's as emotionally effective as... I sort of wanted it to be and as I think the film thinks it is. Part of that definitely I think comes down to the fact that it is quite blunt in its messaging and it's quite pointed in the lessons that the screenplay is getting across to us and the more thematic motives that it wants us to absorb in. I'm not saying that those are bad things and I think they're done effectively but I just think maybe a little bit more subtlety in certain moments or maybe a little bit more time with certain beats might have landed a few more of the emotional moments in the film. But I do think that all films have to be taken obviously within the context of themselves and this is a film which maybe doesn't need all of that emotional heft to it because at the end of the day it is a family film so it's okay to get away with a little bit of bluntness when it comes to that messaging. And maybe it's just me coming at this as more of a Guillermo del Toro fan than a Pinocchio fan. I would have always welcomed more kind of diving down those weird, dark, rich thematic rabbit holes. Thankfully, it's got enough stunning visual stuff going on in the film and a great central cast helming all the characters here that it's never too much of a big problem. I had a really good time with this one and I could see it being one which I'll regularly come back to as a lot of really effective stop animation films have become. I, I feel like this could be a good hungover film and I'm not sure exactly what that means, but I'm keeping it in the review anyway. But what about you guys? Have you seen Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio? What do you think about it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? And where does it rank in your Guillermo del Toro rankings? I'd love to know. So let me know in the comments down below. We'll have a little chat. You can also find my social links down there as well, including my letter box, my Twitter. So if you want to follow me on any of those, go down there and click follow. I will see you guys very soon for some more thoughts on more films. But until next time, I want to hug Mr. Del Toro. I just want, he's a squishy man. He's squishy and he makes incredible cinema. The ultimate combination.